It may surprise some, but we don't just breathe to satisfy a need for oxygen. Of course we need oxygen, but the mechanism is more complex than a simple demand. What actually drives respiration is an impulse which arises from the respiratory center. And this impulse in turn creates the feeling of air hunger and stimulates the intercostal or breathing muscles, which results in the involuntary and mostly unconscious urge to breathe. But what mechanism stimulates the respiratory center? The respiratory center is driven by the level of carbon dioxide in the lungs. In other words, the reflex that causes us to breathe is triggered when the level of carbon dioxide reaches a certain level in our lungs. Dr. Bateko discovered that people who habitually overbreathe do so because their respiratory center has become oversensitive to carbon dioxide. And instead of it creating a breathing impulse that comports with physiological norms, causes them to chronically hyperventilate. His objective then became to recondition or retrain the respiratory center to function properly. This, he hypothesized, would mean that ventilation would normalize, carbon dioxide levels would normalize, and diseases which have their genesis in a low level of carbon dioxide would be discharged or reversed. And this is exactly what happened. He began with simple techniques and was able to reverse simple chronic conditions like blocked nose and went on to develop techniques to reverse deeper conditions. Soon, asthma yielded along with sinusitis and bronchitis. From chronic disease to chronic disease, he proceeded methodically. Emphysema symptoms reversed, blood pressure and sugar levels normalized, migraine headaches reduced in frequency and severity, and even deep systemic disorders began to yield to the techniques he developed. He then went to work meticulously assembling his research, data and clinical results. He believed that he had an ironclad argument for his discovery and subsequent approach to be officially endorsed and implemented for the benefit of all. But the powerful medical establishment wanted nothing to do with his peculiar ideas or so-called discoveries and they obstructed his progress to gain official acceptance at every turn. He was misquoted, ridiculed, falsely accused and deliberate attempts were made to sabotage various trials and approbations. He became a medical dissident. Dr. Bateko didn't help his popularity with medical authorities by robustly condemning the growing trend of symptomatic drug-based treatments, which in his opinion have the effect of increasing the breathing pattern and thus worsening instead of improving the health. Still, Dr. Bottego had allies within the scientific community, military and in high office. And everyone knew of his scientific brilliance and integrity. But the inertia of a medical bureaucracy and the thousands of people who worked within it simply could not implement his revolutionary ideas for the treatment of disease. Dr. Bateko predicted that the promiscuous prescription of symptomatic medications will result in the diseases they attempt to treat becoming worse. And this is exactly what we have seen over the last few decades. Symptomatic treatments don't ameliorate the cause of chronic disease, they acerbate them. Even the term epidemic, which is usually reserved for contagious diseases, is now being applied to chronic diseases, asthma epidemic, diabetes epidemic and so on. So within a system that strictly prohibited it, 
Dr. Bateko was somehow able to establish his own enterprise, and with a small group of practitioners, they began to teach his techniques all over the country. These first practitioners brought the method to all the important cities and factories across the Soviet Union. What they did was technically illegal, and they risked severe punishment, but authorities, for various reasons, mostly exercised restraint. After all, the efficacy of Dr. Bottega's ideas had gained some ground. In the West, medical authorities reacted similarly, in the sense that even when confronted with positive results, they either ridiculed or simply ignored them. But in the West, it was the media that forced Bottega's ideas by simply reporting positive results. If it wasn't for the media and the robust support from patients, the method would have never become known at all. Another interesting delineation between the former Soviet Union and the West was the support which came from medical doctors. Western medical doctors who took the time to investigate the method invariably became supporters. In this brief presentation, we have tried to explain some of the basics, and we hope that you have found it interesting. But what might all of this mean to you? In practical and realistic terms, we offer a profoundly powerful resource for people who wish to either reverse particular chronic ailments or simply augment their level of health and well-being. The kinds of results that can be achieved with the method depend on the individual case and the experience and skill of the practitioner. It's not a miracle treatment. It requires dedication and often some repetitious hard work, but positive results are routine. Within our group are amongst the most qualified and experienced practitioners. Alexander Stolmatsky worked with Dr. Boteko from 1976 and brought Bottega's method to the West and was endorsed by Dr. Bottega as chief practitioner of his method and as a practitioner of the highest qualification. Vladimir Sukhanosov held senior positions within Bottega's clinics in Russia and is also one of the most experienced Russian practitioners. Christopher Drake was the first Western practitioner to receive a diploma from Dr. Bottega. He worked with Alexander in Australia and introduced the method to the UK. Jack Vigen is also one of the very few Western practitioners to have received a diploma from Dr. Bottega and introduced the method to Asia. Martha Rowe and Edward Rovers started with Learn Bottega as facilitators and have progressed to associate practitioners after successfully overcoming their own health problems and producing excellent results with hundreds of students in the UK, Asia and the Netherlands. With the advent of internet-based video conferencing, it is now possible to connect a highly qualified and experienced practitioner to almost anyone 